Hi everybody, welcome back to The Painting Channel and today I'm going to be doing a lovely Cornish seascape with a couple of figures in it, so let's roll that intro and let's see what happens. Hi everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, I'm going to be doing a lovely Cornish seascape. Now, I do love Cornwall and I do love the rugged coastlines. And this one is a picture from Kylance Cove. It's a beautiful setting where I tried to make it something quite simple. Some rocky elements and some big mass forms, but more about the perspective, light and dark, running from front to back and making it cooler as it goes back. And I added a couple of ladies in the photograph into the picture just to give it a narrative and give it a sense of purpose. So I do hope you enjoy the process and I look forward to catching you the other end. Take care, enjoy, bye bye. Okay everybody, before we get started, uh, let's just talk about the paper quickly. It is, again, it's a quarter imperial and it is ash, 300 pound in weight and it is a rough surface. And I love this paper because it's quite a stiff board. You don't need to stretch it, tape it down really. The tape here is washi tape and it's only there as an aesthetic, nothing more. I do like to have a little bit of a border around the edge of my painting. And to me, that works out very, very nicely. And often or not, if you're very careful when you put this on, you can actually take it off and reuse it. This indeed has been used on at least one if not more other paintings in the past and i also locked down the corners across here as a good friend pointed out it stops the water ingressing into where the joints overlap it stops that water ingression there so you do try and keep those lovely crisp white edges so okay now the subject itself we are revisiting cornwall and I wanted to look at something I felt was just a little bit easier to think about. And we have a lovely structure. We have several people in the background, which I probably won't actually employ. I won't need to put those in. They, if anything, distract the view from the two main figures. But the two main figures are nicely set up. You don't have to be exactly specific with them. And I indeed I'm not going to be. And I'm also going to change their outfit colors to somewhat brighter colors. So they actually become an enhancement to the whole image. And I'm going to leave them where they are. And I'm going to leave them about that sort of size in the, in the drawing. But then I want this lovely lead in set of rocks here. We've got the lovely backdrop and we've got that lovely cool violet blue colors that we're going to employ in there a little bit of yellow in the rocks coming down behind the people and this little bit of rock here lovely turquoise clear beautiful sea of the cornish coastline and the lovely wet sand now i say it's going to be an easy one i picked it because i felt that there were fewer elements to consider and if you didn't quite get the rocks exactly as the photograph I don't think it's a great sin. I think the idea is to have a little bit of fun and enjoy these two figures here and try and put them into a setting that really works. So let's get on with the drawing and we will see where this goes. Now I'm going to plot my people. If you look at them, they are above halfway. They actually start sort of somewhere about there, I think, in the picture plane, may even be a little higher. Thank you. 
I got to Kainats on this day when the waves were pushing way up here somewhere. And as I stood there for a long, long time doing a bit of painting and photography and what have you, so too the waves receded, receded. But I don't think there was any time during the whole course of watching this display of waves and sea and sand being exposed. It was changing so much, so dramatically all the time. Every bit of it was so interesting to sit and watch. I want to put some washes in, but I want to choose colors that are representative of aerial perspectives. So they're going to be cool violets and something like that with a few surprises of some umbers, some yellows in here and something like maybe yellow ochre and raw sienna coming in and some very, very pale washes to represent the faces where the rocks are catching the light even to the point of leaving a bit of white paper here and there. So that's why I've used a rough paper and that I can then come back in and sort of use some dry brush techniques to skim over and leave some more important light areas. Here I will put some lighter washes in, but I will then come back with the sand, the wet sand washes later on. So the light sand will be a combination of maybe some pale raw sienna, and something like that and maybe some violets kicking in there just to give a little bit of undulation to the sand certainly some lovely violets in the faces of the rock and then we can come back in and continue so first things first then let's look at our background color So what I'm going to do now is use the same brush, clean it out a little bit, pick up some nice raw sienna. There's a little bit of other colors from my last painting got into that. Not a big problem. I put some yellow ochre into that as well. So what I'm going to turn my attention to now is why this is still damp. I'm going to have a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of that Indian red together 
and I want it very, very weak, very weak tea. And I'm going to bring that through here just as a small suggestion. And I'm going to leave that white paper. I think we don't need to worry too much about that. Bring that down. I want to put a sense of that sea right the way through that lovely beautiful Cornish waves and sea that we admire so much that lovely turquoisine very much so I like that is it Atlantic or, or sort of warmer climbs just going to pop little bits of color in there like that All right, so we haven't actually done anything on this rock. So let's come back in now, and it's somewhat warmer. The rock is closer. I'm going to use some burnt umber, a little bit of the blue, so it's not pure warm and quite pale in color. It's a wash, don't forget. We need a lot of this color to get very pale as it dries out. Now that, to me, is a little dark. I'm going to lift areas up. I'm just going to suggest that some of that white paper will remain and some of it will be lost. contamination bit of red way too much very strong but to that I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna and quite a weak solution now I'm going to come over our ladies I'm going to come down with their bodies as it were the color of their skin they're quite tanned and I bring that coming all the way through there and down through her legs Just some little lights and darks in here and then some taps of color suggesting because there is an almighty amount of different lovely little subtle shades as it goes into the sand and comes down to the edge of the rock at this point now i'm leaving some of that uh, area there i don't have any white paper now but that is uh, because i wasn't paying enough attention and i didn't leave I took my lovely sandy colour all the way through and hadn't realised what I was doing. Nice little bit of light on the top of the rocks and then that can be enhanced when we come back into this area. So let's come back in. We're going to predominantly use the same colours. I'm just going to start putting in some other areas that are suggestive of rocks and shadow and shapes in the distance and the background. Now these, I don't want them to be all hard edged. So I put them on, but I can soften them. I put a little dampness into the brush, just soften some of those marks as they go away from us up into these areas.
and and to that i'm going to put in a little bit of umber up to one end one side of it so that we have a predominantly brown area here and to the bluer area in there it's just going to come across here with a very strong element to the face of this rock bring it down Now to some indigo, and I'm going to use a lot of lemon in that, make a bit of a dirty, grungy old green color. And I want to come in here with some of these little areas within the rock. Maybe even a little bit of raw sienna to replace some of the rich uh, quinacridone gold that I've just put in there. And we're going to look at similar colors now. We're going to come in here. We're going to look at some stronger dark marks that are around the ladies, especially in this area between them. So that's quite dark in there. We can make that darker, and we probably will. We'll probably come back in and do another layer over these, just a little bit between there and there, and then carry that on through here.
Here is here. Now I'm going to leave a little suggestion of the lady's reflection. And I'm going to be using some of these areas. I'm going to break up some of the water, as it were, so we've got little bits of light popping through in places. And while that's like that, let's take a damp brush now. Let's just run that along that edge, soften that as it disappears up into the areas of the beach that are obviously a lot drier. I'll bring some of that down through here. Going to take that light there, cut round shapes of some of these rocks. Okay, I'm, I'm, I really am. I'm quite happy with the way that's looking. There's a little bit of dark between the two ladies there coming down. I think we're good. All right, so we've got our wet sand. We've got everything else done. We've got to put in a bit of dark on here. Once more, we're going to come back in to our indigo with this time a little bit of the Indian red. And I'm just going to come in and just look at some of these big dark marks, facets in our rock. can hear the seagulls outside they're just adding the extra sound effects 
at great expense for you. Right, just dropping some of it down. Just tapping one or two darks. These are warmer darks than the cooler ones that I was using. That's fine. Just adding yet another layer to this whole thing. What I want to do now is I'm going to use a little bit of phthalo blue, a little bit of that turquoise green, that cobalt green. And I just want to come in with a few suggested areas of light dark in our sea. It's such a beautiful color in the water anyway. I mean, the water over there is just stunning. A little bit of dark behind some of these. A little bit of green up into there. Let's just turn our attention to the ladies. And I'm going to come in with a nice blue, darkish blue on this one here. I'm just going to come in here and sort of suggest it's got that sort of shape on. Let that dry and we just put in a little bit of um, extra in senses of shadows and reflection and we're just going to put in a little bit of reflection in there now just a sense of it not too heavy it's not too strong can't see too much of it
I think I'm done. I'm quite happy with the way that's turned out. Got two ladies standing on the sand in a Cornish beach or on a Cornish beach at Kynance. And it, you know, there's a lot more you can do, but I'm quite happy with in the time that I've had to have creating this and I've enjoyed the process. So I'm sure you got something from it. And I look forward to your versions very, very shortly. I'm just going to sign it and uh, call it a day. I'm going to sign it up here out the way. There we are. Okay, sign, done, sorted. Okay, everybody, I had a lot of fun with doing that. I do hope you enjoyed the process. And don't forget that the reference for this will be over on my Patreon along with the line art. You can pop on over there and download it for free. You do not need to be a patron to do that. And that's fine, not a problem. Learn from it and put your versions up on the Facebook page, Painting with Paul Apps. I love to see them. And it's a growing community of people. So get involved. Join in and put your versions to any of my uh, YouTube tutorials up onto that page. Love to see them. And if you are over on the Patreon, you know what I'm going to say. Why not take a look around? There's well over 125, 130 videos on there now. They're all full length, fully narrated. Some of them now, they're more and more becoming exclusive ones. So that's something that you're not going to see on YouTube. And all the rest are at least full length and fully narrated. So take a look at those. There are many levels you can get involved with. There's a three, a five and a ten dollar. There is even an oil tier and a combined if you want to get involved and you like oils as well. But take a look around. I love to welcome you as my latest patron on that site. That would be fantastic. And know that every penny that you put into my patron is helping me keep making more video content for you guys to enjoy. And on that subject, if you have enjoyed this one, then please give it a big, big thumbs up. And it really does help the channel grow. It tells the algorithm that the channel is worth promoting. And you know what I'm going to say next? If you're not a subscriber and you're watching this, and if you watch several of mine, then give it a subscribe. You must like the content, so help support the channel. Subscribe to it. Click the bell icon and also the notifications tab. It tells you each and every time I upload a new video, which is normally every Friday at 3 p.m. So with all that said and done, don't forget also add your comments, especially if you fancy me doing a particular subject. If there's something you would like me to paint, then please put it in the comments section. I try and cover that in a future video for you. Can't promise it, but I will certainly add it to my list and try and create a video based around the subject that you suggest. So put those down and I look forward to reading those and I'll always answer them. In the meantime, I'm just going to say, guys, wherever you are, stay safe, enjoy your painting, have lots of fun. I catch each and every one of you next week at 3 p.m. on a new video. Until that time, take care, stay safe. Bye bye. some figures in it and I'm gonna return uh, nope start again then hi everybody welcome back to the painting channel this week I'm gonna be no. hi everybody and welcome back as I said at the start I am gonna be Rizzy <laughs> start again then hi everybody welcome back as I said at the start I'm going to be doing a lovely Cornish landscape. Landscape? Seascape. I meant seascape. I did, honest. And today I'm going to be doing something that I fancy. No. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Seagulls. Good effect. <laughs>